Welcome back to the channel. In this video series we'll be taking a children's pedal car and converting it to electric power. Let's get started. Okay, let's give you a quick overview of the project. So the basic... Hold on. Uh, might help if I actually plug it in. Okay, I'll try again. Okay, so a quick overview of the project. The basic frame's pretty good, it's not too bad, so I'll be reusing that. The steering system at the front, that's not too bad, so I'll be reusing that. But I will be making new brake pedal and throttle pedal uh, and all those assemblies, and there'll also be a kind of footrest part in the middle, that's the white plate you can see at the front. Down the centre is the two 12 volt batteries, they're 7 amp hour batteries. Uh, they're uh, in series to give 24 volts. Then at the rear end, there'll be a whole new drive plate that'll have the 24 volt, 300 watt motor. There'll be a tooth drive belt down to the rear axle, uh, disc brakes on there, um, and then uh, there's a speed controller you can just see under the seat. But that's the basic idea. Okay, shouldn't take too long. Let's get started. Okay, so today's job, we're going to make the brake pedal bar here. This is the drawing. We'll turn this shaft down to 15mm here. Light chamfer there, and we'll see if we can get a bit of knurling going on on this piece here. So you're going to rest your foot on that. Pretty straightforward. We've got this bar here. It's a bit of stock. Which is, uh, as luck would have it, bring it 15, so not too much to do on that one. Right, let's head over to the lathe. Off we go. Lathes that way. So here I'm using the nose of the chuck just to keep the thread cutting die square to the stock and also to help put some pressure on to get the thread started. Okay, so we've, we've taken it down on that side. You can see there's a slight chamfer on that just to get the thread started. But well, that means we haven't fully threaded this right to the end. So if we just flip it around, now you can see the thread starts right at that edge there, so we'll just turn this over and send it right to the end. Now there's a lot of people will say you probably shouldn't use the chuck key in there because you're going to wear these out. They're probably right.
Next up, and we're going to make this bridle. Bridle. All right, next up, we're going to make this brake pedal bar down the side here. Uh, it's got a pivot at the bottom. There's a connection here for this balance bar to go in. That's the yellow piece there. And then there's a return spring. And then the pedal bar footrest part goes at the top here. Here's the more detailed drawing of that. So here's the pivot down the bottom on this, uh, this 10 millimeter hole. That needs to be accurately drilled because and ream because that's the, uh, the pivot point. Then we've got various tapped holes here for the brake balance feature and return spring. And at the top here, we've got our M12 hole, which takes this pedal bar here, we'll screw into there, and be locked tight it in. Stop for that. We've got a piece of this sheet here, so do nicely, because it needs to be eight millimeters. Close enough. Right, CNC machine. Uh, that way. so that the 3mm drill that's to follow doesn't wander, it stays on track. I'm about to make a small error, see if you can spot it before it happens. hole will take the pressed bush so I've come back to the finish pass to try and get an accurate bore. Okay now for the profile. Okay so here's the brake lever. Now I've tapped some of these holes, this bottom one down here is the um, pivot point at the bottom, I'll have a bushing in, let's do that next. Okay, the next part is this pivot bolt here. This is the part that will go through this bush here and provide the pivot for the brake to work on. So that's based on this M12 bolt. What we'll do is just turn that shank down there to provide the 8mm diameter part for that to run on. And then we'll retain the M12 thread at this end and that will hold it in position in the uh, brake housing. Right, let's go to the lathe and make that part. So here it is complete, and we'll just clean it up a little bit, clean up the threads and the end, getting some polish on here. 
Let's see if it fits in. Okay. It's a nice sliding fit. That should do fine. Okay, next up the brake mounting block. I'll give you a quick overview of that. So it has a number of features and functions all built into one block, just trying to make it a little bit simpler. So at the bottom there you've got the pivot where the brake bar itself uh, pivots. Uh, and then next up you've got the limit sort of, uh, screws that stop the pedal going too far forward or rearward. Then further up towards the top there you can see where the brake cables go in. These are just standard bike brake cables. They will go to the to the rear brake discs, and then just ahead of them, we haven't made that yet, but that's the uh, the brake balance bar. It's a triangular shaped object. So when you press the brake, it just pulls on those brake cables and actuates the calipers at the back. Fairly straightforward. Okay, now let's give you an overview of the drawings. There's quite a few uh, ops on this part. I think actually four ops to do in total. Let's do that next. So here's the drawing of the part. See, there's quite a few features to the machine in there. A uh, number of holes, slots. I'd say there's at least, uh, I think, the four ops on this part in total. Uh, it's made up of a 20 millimeter plate, and then everything else machined out from that. Okay, let's get the stock ready. So that's. So I managed to find this piece here, which I can use. I've just marked it out roughly. Looks like I can get that out of there without hitting the uh, any of the holes that are there. Okay, let's get it clamped down and get started.
Okay, next up I've got to drill and tap a number of holes. So we've got, uh, there was an M5, a couple of M6s, a couple of M8s, and an M12 at the top here. Uh, so what we need to refer to is our tapping chart here. So the standard, unless specified, the standard is that they're coarse threads. So for example, if we've got our, uh, let's zoom in a bit, we've got our M6 here by one, that's the pitch, and there's the diameter. Uh, our tapping drill needs to be five. For the M8, 1.25, that's the standard pitch, and the tapping drill needs to be 6.8 and so on. Okay, so here's the part finished up, all the holes tapped, all the edges deburred. It looks okay. Okay, let's go and test fit the uh, brake pedal, see if it fits in the hole. So it goes uh, that way. Okay, pivot in there. So it's going to work. So I've counterboard that and tapped it. So that will be the, the backstop to limit the travel this way. The spring will be pulling it that way onto that stop. Uh, these two here are to take uh, the brake cable. So it's like this. I haven't got the inner threaded through at the moment, but uh, there'll be one goes in there and one goes in there, and then the inner piece. The inner piece comes out of this side and it'll be the brake balance bar about here. Uh, the hole in the middle, I just put that in anyway just in case I needed to in the future drill and tap that out and put um, a small switch here so when you press the brakes switch opens. Uh, there's a function built into the speed controller that uh, would activate a rear brake light so it might be a bit of fun just to add that and uh, if you're going to add it you may as well add it now while well, it's nice and easy. So I've just left that as a blank M3. I can tap that out or bore it to suit later. Okay, another big part of the build done. Let's go on to the next one. Before we move on to the next part, just one thing I want to point out. Uh, so that all looks good. Moves nicely in there. Nice clearance. All the features are good. On this side, you'll notice uh, there's, look, this bore is larger than the pin that comes through the other side. So there are two possibilities. Either I messed up in cam, or I did it on purpose so that I could turn up this small dust cap, press that in there to make a nice fit. I guess we'll never know which of those two it is. And there's that cover pressed in. Looks a bit more like I did it on purpose now. Okay, good. Right, now we can go on to the next part. Okay, next part is the brake balance bar. So I've just um, roughly cut this stock. Should be about 40, 44 by 42. Yeah, close enough, and um, by 20. Okay, I'm gonna pop this part up in the vise. Now the, the brake balance bar is only 15 mil thick, so we can just hold it at the edges and do all the machining, the profile, and all the internal features. Okay, let's go and do that next.
Next little job, I'm just going to see if the springs will fit nicely between here and here and then see how long the bolts have to be and if I have to turn any inserts just to make some clamps. Um, I got this little set off eBay for about £6, contains all those springs in there. One of them's bound to fit. Let's kind of have a look. 